The Chinese People's Liberation Army's biggest opponent may not be the United States military, but itself. In the book, Why the PLA Can Win, National Defense University professor, senior colonel Liu Mingfu wrote, there's only one force in the world that can defeat the Chinese PLA. It's corruption. Corruption is the most formidable force that can bring down the Chinese military from within. Xi Jinping's anti-corruption campaign is unlikely to change the PLA's fate. Hello everyone, welcome to Lei's Real Talk. I'm Lei. In part one of this series, we review the history of the Chinese Navy's internal political struggle. Today, let's discuss its corruption scandals. Corruption and economic reforms are like the two sides of a coin that are inseparable. Corruption in the PLA began as soon as China started the economic reforms in the 1980s. It worsened in the 1990s after Jiang Zemin became the leader. No countries allowed active duty military personnel to engage in commercial activities, but Jiang indulged the PLA officers with money and women to win their support because he didn't have much political clout in Beijing at that time. In September 1998, at the National Conference Against Tax Evasion Smuggling, then Premier Zhu Rongji said that 800 billion yuan worth of goods were smuggled each year for tax evasion, of which 500 billion was controlled by the PLA. He said more than 80% of the 160 billion profits went into the personal pocketbooks of PLA officers at all levels. The ones who benefited the most were the Red Princelings, the offspring of the founding members of the Communist Party. In 1979, Deng Xiaoping set up the state-owned China International Trust and Investment Corporation, or CIDIC. In 1983, six major shareholders of CIDIC established the China Marine Helicopter Company. In 1984, CIDIC set up Poly Corporation. Both companies were run by princelings affiliated with the PLA and involved in smuggling of goods and services from airplanes, arms, to sex, and the Chinese Navy was the center of the sex trade. The PLA has three naval bases near Sanya, Hainan, the Yulin Submarine Base, the Yalong Bay Nuclear Submarine Base, and the Xiachuan Island Base. Xiachuan Island is located about six kilometers away from Taishan City in Guangdong Province, at the southern tip of the mainland. The island is only 108 nautical miles from Taiwan's Dongsha Island and was once known as the world's largest prostitution island. In 2001, the Taiwan edition of the Hong Kong's Next magazine reported on the sex industry on the Xiachuan Island. About 70% of the sex workers came from Hunan province, followed by women from Sichuan and other poorer inland regions. Over 100,000 Taiwanese men visited the island annually, making up of 70% of the total visitors. The other 30% came from Hong Kong, Macau, Southeast Asia, and the mainland. Japanese writer Masatoshi Yasuda devoted an entire chapter on the subject in a book that explores sexuality in modern China. The chapter is titled the world's largest prostitution island is controlled by the People's Liberation Army. Yasuda said that the island is home to the 52nd submarine detachment of the South Sea Fleet, and the nearby Shangchuan Island housed the 26th missile speedboat detachment. Media personality Alexander Liao said that a princeling who owned a helicopter company and was also the deputy chief of staff of the South Sea Fleet often used helicopters to shuttle his VIP clients to the island for pleasure. In 1998, Premier Zhu Rongji said that PLA officers involved in illegal trade forged his signature, faked the Central Military Commission's seal, and opened fire on China's own law enforcement, killing more than 450 and injured 2,200 custom officers in the first half of 1998. Similarly, the sex industry in China is backed by armed police and the military, 
or they wouldn't be allowed to exist. However, sexual promiscuity within the military can destroy the PLA. Remember in the last episode, I mentioned the unusual death of the former Navy commander Zhang Dingfa, who was involved in an assassination attempt of Hu Jintao. Zhang was a sex addict, and some say his death was related to an AIDS outbreak in a hospital in Beijing. Zhang was suffering from brain tumors and was treated at the 301 Military Hospital, which is the hospital serving top CCP leaders. While he was there, the famed Beijing hospital had an AIDS outbreak. A male patient died of AIDS, and he had had sexual relations with a married woman working at the hospital. The woman was also diagnosed with AIDS. This sent shockwaves through the top CCP leadership because the woman admitted to having had sex with over 20 men at the hospital and more outside the hospital. There is a well-known but unspoken fact that the 301 hospital employs attractive nurses and good-looking young women. Many leaders like to check into the hospital to be taken care of by these beautiful women. They look for services not related to healthcare. It's more convenient than hotels because it's normal that you get undressed at hospitals. So the news that an attractive woman at the 301 hospital got AIDS set off a bomb in Beijing's power circle, causing many CCP leaders and their wives restless at night. This woman's husband was the secretary of the Navy Commissar. Zhang Dingfa was the Navy commander. It was said that Zhang got scared after learning the news and died soon thereafter. So did he die of AIDS? Although we can't confirm it, some people believe so. This is because around the same time, the CCP's Politburo ordered that senior officers of all military branches, regions, and army groups above the division level must be tested for AIDS and sexually transmitted diseases, or STD, once every six months and report the test results. The leaders learned that the incidence rate of STD and AIDS among senior military officers at the regiment, division, and army levels had grown rapidly. On October 9, 2006, the Military Discipline Commission and the General Administration issued an order prohibiting all military branches, regions, provincial military districts, and police districts from recruiting young women to serve in military clubs. In early October 2006, the CCP issued another order denying memorial services to military officers who die from STD or AIDS. Some say this is precisely the reason why no official announcement was made about Zhang Dingfa's death. But the Jiang Zemin's faction put a lot of pressure on Hu Jintao, who caved in and eventually allowed a memorial service for Zhang weeks later. Sex and money have plagued the Chinese Navy. Since 2013, a number of senior naval officers have committed suicide. For example, the head of the equipment of South Sea Fleet, Rear Admiral Jiang Zhonghua, Deputy Political Commissar of the Navy, Rear Admiral Ma Fa-Xiang, and Director of the Enterprise Management Center of the Navy Logistic Department, Senior Colonel Li Fuwen, died from suicide. Chinese media disclosed that Ma Fa-Xiang ended his life to protect a group of people under him. Ma was once named a potential successor of the Navy's commissar, the highest position in the Navy. In the past 10 years, a list of Navy generals have fallen, including the North Sea Fleet Deputy Chief of Staff, Real Admiral Chen Jie, and Real Admiral Wang Yu of the South Sea Fleet Equipment Department. Other generals rumored to have been removed for investigation since 2017 include Director of the Navy's Political and Public Works Department, Lieutenant General Yang Shiguang, Deputy Commander of the Navy, Lieutenant General Su Zhitian, Deputy Political Commissar of the East Sea Fleet, Rear Admiral Li Jiangtan, former Chief of Staff of the East Sea Fleet, Rear Admiral Liu Hongsheng, and former logistics director of the East Sea Fleet, Rear Admiral Liu Zhichen. There are more corrupt officers than these few names. 
Xi Jinping attributed the corruption to Western influences and the opening up policy. That's why he believes that poverty and decoupling will serve the country well. But she should know that money and women aren't the problem. It's the CCP's demand for absolute power that has corrupt people. It's destruction of traditional values and faith, and replacing them with the communist ideology are the sources of the problem. Unless the communist regime is ended, corruption will only get worse. In the end, the Chinese PLA's worst enemy is itself. Here's the first video in the series. Please like and subscribe. That's all for today. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.